Welcome back. ABC 7's First Alert weather team monitoring a tropical depression tonight in the Caribbean. Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan joins us now with the First Alert weather forecast. Bob? Yeah, something we have to watch very closely here along the west coast of Florida. Although we're not, in, we are not in the cone of uncertainty at this point. That may change down the road. There's many factors that could come into play. We have a tropical low, uh, if you will, just to the south of Florida right now, which will actually interact with this system down the, road, the way and could cause it to uh, maybe move more toward the west coast of Florida. Here's what's happening. We do know this: that the winds have not exceeded the 39 mile hour threshold, so it's still a tropical depression. But we do expect it to become a tropical storm fairly soon, if not tonight, then tomorrow morning. The interaction with Nicaragua and Honduras may inhibit it somewhat, but the circulation is well defined, and the upper level flow, the outflow, is excellent in all quadrants at this point. So there's nothing really to inhibit this other than the land interaction. There's some big storms firing up there, and the possibility of life-threatening flash flooding occurring through. Throughout Nicaragua and Honduras at this point. It's moving to the northwest very slowly at seven miles an hour and is expected to continue on that general path. Now, there are tropical storm warnings out in effect. I mentioned those two countries. And then if it gets in here and stays out over this water, it slows down, it could become a hurricane prior to getting into the Gulf of Mexico. If it moves more over the Yucatan, it certainly won't be as strong a storm as it emerges into the Gulf, but we do expect it to become at least a Category 1 hurricane by Saturday at 1 o'clock. It should be uh, parallel with the uh, um, actually Marco Island as it makes its way northward. Notice it'll be uh, hundreds of miles west of us if it stays on the center line, but there could be a shift, and the Hurricane Center is suggesting don't focus on that center line so much, and he, they do think that this cone will change and shift in time, it has shifted a little bit off to the west or uh, to the left in this last advisory simply because the models are starting to trend that way. Well, more in the forecast coming up in a few minutes. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Bob. With the possibility of severe weather on the Sun Coast and with a little less than two months left in this year's active hurricane season, it's always a good idea to be prepared. And the sooner the better, especially when it comes to restocking your hurricane supplies that you may have used for Irma. Empty store shelves, remember that, only a too recent memory after Irma. To make sure you're prepared for the entire season. If you have a hurricane kit ready, it's good that you already have that. If not, you need to take the steps uh, today, tomorrow, uh, no later than Friday to really make sure you get everything together that you need for yourself, for your family, your friends to get through what could be a hurricane moving toward the Florida Panhandle or Florida Big Bend. Lost your hurricane supply list? Well, we've got you covered there. You can download this year's hurricane guide at mysuncoast.com. Just click on the weather tab and download guide. And remember, if you need a refresher, we invite you to watch our hour-long special called Surviving a Hurricane, which is available now on our other platforms, including Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. More relief may be on the way for victims of Hurricanes Maria, uh, Harvey, and Irma. The Trump administration is finalizing a $29 billion disaster aid package. This request would address two pressing needs. The first to pump money into the flood insurance program, which is rapidly running out of cash to pay an influx of claims from hurricane victims. Secondly, to give FEMA money for disaster relief operations. The huge request is expected to be officially sent to Congress on Wednesday. The investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 election remains open. That's according to the two top members of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Today's update emerging on the heels of Facebook and Twitter announcing that they were paid thousands of dollars by Russian companies running ads attempting to influence Americans during last year's presidential campaign. ABC's Elizabeth Hur is in Washington with those details. The Russia investigation on Capitol Hill, specifically the issue of possible collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign, continuing. You can't walk away from this and believe that Russia is not currently active in trying to create chaos in our election process. Still no conclusion, but the Senate Intelligence Committee revealing Russian attempts to influence voters through social media, now a part of their investigation. They used the social media firms both in terms of paid advertising and what I believe is more problematic, but created false accounts. Just last week, Twitter confirmed they identified 200 accounts that spread misinformation that one Russian company spent at least $274,000 for ads targeting swing states to try and help Donald Trump get elected. This week, 
Facebook announced it turned over thousands of Russian-linked ads to Congress after selling at least $100,000 in ads to fake Russian accounts during and after the presidential election. ABC News obtaining some of those ads congressional investigators say the Russians planted, including this anti-immigration one with the line, we need to stop this madness, we need Trump. We have more work to do uh, as it relates to collusion, but we're developing a clearer picture of uh, what happened. Officials also announced this investigation has now expanded to include reviews of Attorney General Jeff Sessions' possible meeting with a Russian official and the firing of now former FBI Director James Comey. Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, Washington. Over the past few years, one complex in Manatee County repeatedly floods during storms and heavy rains, and those who live there say new development could be the reason why. Shady Brook Village condominiums were built in the 1970s right along Bowles Creek. Last year, more than two dozen people had to deal with flooding inside their units following a record rainfall. And when that record was broken again in August, 36 units flooded. The county blames the historic rains for that flooding, but some people are not convinced. Assigning this as a historic rain issue, uh, one that has occasionally happened and uh, is, uh, is uh, just a fluke, uh, is not the appropriate way to move forward. Coming up on ABC 7 News at 7, we'll take a closer look at nearby apartment homes built right before this flooding started and speak to the county commissioner who is now asking county workers to check out the creek situation. A follow up now on a big step forward for a parking garage at St. Armand Circle in Sarasota. This week, the Sarasota City Commission authorized up to $17.5 million in bonds for that project. The vote finalizes the funding model for a 500 space garage at North Adams Drive and Madison Drive. The total cost is estimated around $15.5 million. City officials say it will repay the bonds using paid parking revenue and funds from a special assessment on Circle property owners. The city be hopes to begin that construction on the garage in the spring of 2018. An affordable housing complex in Venice may be getting a step closer to being built. The whole project rests on being awarded state funding, but for the last several years, that project has been denied. ABC 7's Christopher Brantley joins us now live with the latest on the approaching deadline for the Venetian Walk. Christopher. A good evening. The Venice Housing Authority would like to build five buildings here in this empty space behind me, but getting the funding for those low-income houses has been quite a bit of a challenge. There's a huge need in the community. I get phone calls every day. I'm a single mother with two children. I need housing. Where can I go? The place, Martha Thomas, executive director of the Venice Housing Authority, would like to direct those calls to is a five-building, 52-unit apartment complex for low-income families. We're now getting a look at what the buildings could look like, but the project hasn't been fully funded. It's disappointing every year when we get turned down or when we don't get a good lottery number. The bulk of the $11 million price tag would come from the state of Florida, which awards grant money for affordable housing projects. Part of the selection process is a lottery system. Shoot, you know, you don't know. You put the application in, it's like playing a lottery for Florida. You know? yeah. If you're lucky, you get a good number, and if you're not lucky, you don't. Venice hasn't gotten the lucky number for the last eight years. They're applying again this year, and they're getting some help. $550,000 from the city of Venice. $750,000 from Sarasota County and potentially another $500,000 from Sarasota County and the city of Sarasota. That on top of the $1 million the Venice Housing Authority has already pledged. You've heard this uh, saying it takes a village, well, it takes the county. The application deadline is October 12th. If the project is selected, the Venice Housing Authority says they're ready to build. We're shovel ready. We are ready to go. We have the infrastructure put in. Uh, our plans are just about, you know, I think they're 100 percent plans now. That potential $500,000 does have to be approved by both Sarasota County Commissioners and City of Sarasota Commissioners. Both of those boards will meet next week to vote. Live in Venice, Christopher Brantley, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. All right, thank you, Christopher. A funeral service will be held tomorrow for a corrections deputy with the Manatee County Sheriff's Office who was killed in a head-on crash last week. Sean Feverson was killed when a Ford pickup truck towing a trailer made a left turn and then collided with his Jeep Wrangler. The Jeep flipped on its side and Feverson was pronounced dead at the scene. The driver of the truck had minor injuries and was also cited for that accident. 
Funeral services for Deputy Feverston will be held tomorrow at Bayside Community Church on State Road 64 East in Bradenton. Visitation will be from 10 to 11 a.m. and the funeral will start at 11. After first insisting the Sunshine State is off limits to O.J. Simpson, Attorney General Pam Bondi now says she wants new conditions placed on the former football player if he doesn't tend to travel here. Bondi says if Simpson decides to relocate to the state where his family lives, she wants him to wear an ankle bracelet so that his whereabouts can be monitored, something that is not a condition of his parole in Nevada. She also wants Simpson's Florida travels to be limited, adding he should be prohibited from alcohol and drugs and report in person to his parole officer and not by mail. If he was a perfect inmate, if we believe he, you know, because he does have family here, if he's going to come to our state, we will be sure there are added conditions on him. No request has been made by Nevada regarding Simpson being able to cross state lines to Florida. Well, still to come in your Suncoast News tonight, new intelligence into a 2013 cyber hack involving Yahoo. Why officials are now calling the data breach three times worse than they originally thought. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our autumn upgrade event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. What to do when your heating or air conditioning needs service or heaven forbid replacement? Call Air Now today. We've been serving Sarasota and Manatee County since 1946. We offer $49.95 tune-ups, lease or finance options, and remember, service today or it's free. Hi, I'm Chef Bob. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7, where we'll be serving up the most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. If you're over the age of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days, I have some important news for you. Don't buy an annuity until you understand the pros and cons of annuities. A free book to help you maximize your retirement income from television host and three-time author Josh Melberg has been released. This book reveals little-known truths about annuity strategies in simple-to-understand terms. Grab a pen right now because we are about to offer you this free book that unlocks the five little-known secrets we believe baby boomers and seniors should know before buying an annuity. Call 800-307-2040 now and and you'll receive a free copy of Josh Milberg's book, Next Gen Annuity Strategies Revealed. As a bonus, we'll also send you the number one mistakes retirees are making with their investments today and a free DVD on how you can get up to 33% more income in retirement. Call 800-307-2040 to have your free information kit rushed to your door. Again, that's 800-307-2040. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. About every three minutes in America, someone is diagnosed with a blood cancer. Light the Night brings together survivors and supporters to bring light to the darkness of cancer and to help fund life-saving research. Our goal is a world without blood cancers, and we're lighting the path to cures. The discoveries made in blood cancer research have led to breakthrough treatments for many cancers and other serious diseases. Help defeat the darkness of cancer. Join Light the Night today. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our autumn upgrade event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. The former CEO of Equifax being questioned on Capitol Hill today, grilled by lawmakers over the company's recent hack that compromised the Social Security numbers of more than 145 million Americans. The hearing comes as we learn that the massive Yahoo breach in 2013 was even bigger than originally thought. ABC's Maggie Ruley has the latest. New details on two major data breaches reveal that most likely you have been affected. A big financial institution screwed up. Executives walk away with millions of dollars. Tens of millions of Americans end up holding the bag. 
Yahoo now tripling down on its 2013 data breach numbers, saying 3 billion of its customers were affected, the largest in history. And Equifax getting grilled on Capitol Hill for its unprecedented breach of private information that included the full nine digit social security numbers of more than 145 million Americans, putting identities and credit at risk in about half of all households in the country. The company's former CEO has since resigned. I'm truly and deeply sorry for what happened. He says call centers have been beefed up and a support package for those affected is now being offered. But lawmakers call Equifax's response inadequate at best. And the slow rollout and how poor it was done to me is just inexcusable. And at worst, just a front to make more profit off people who purchase data protection after a breach. Senator Elizabeth Warren rips Richard Smith for increasing Equifax's profits 80% since 2013, even as the company suffered four separate hacks. Equifax did a terrible job of protecting our data because they didn't have a reason to care to protect our data. Because of this breach, consumers will spend the rest of their lives worrying about identity thefts. But Equifax will be just fine. Heck, it could actually come out ahead. To find out if you were affected, go to EquifaxSecurity2017.com and click on MI Impacted. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, New York. Now your ABC 7 first alert weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Well, some clouds around Liquid Ranch webcam showing a review of what was going on throughout the day today. Some fast moving clouds and fast moving showers at times uh, and then periods of sunshine. That's uh, what we're going to see through this evening and then uh, overnight we'll see a little bit more shower and thunderstorm activity start to develop and it looks like Thursday could be pretty wet uh, with the tropical wave down to our south, a little mid-level low too, kind of bringing all this moisture that you see down to our south right into the west coast of Florida. So our rain chances will be elevated throughout the day on Thursday and the small craft advisories will stay with us too uh, right through Thursday and possibly even into the weekend now uh, with that tropical system developing down to our south. So expect a brief shower. These are moving at around 20 to 25 miles an hour. So they're not going to stick around long, but they could produce some locally heavy rainfall with some gusty winds up to 25 to 30 miles an hour as they make their way through uh, parts of the Sun Coast uh, through this evening. You see that one cell right there now entering into the eastern portion of Sarasota County, northeast Sarasota County, and uh, that will continue to move off toward the west southwest at 20 to 25 miles an hour. Hidden River getting some uh, moderate downpours right now. And, that all heading off in a general direction toward the Gulf of Mexico. So the forecast through this evening will stay windy. Uh, periods of light to moderate showers at times. In most areas will stay dry, but we will see these brief periods of uh, moderate rainfall. And then a little bit more concentrated rain expected throughout the day on Thursday as this system starts to work off to the west and eventually clears out of here, opening up the path for tropical depression number 16 to move into the Gulf of Mexico down the road by this weekend. So once that moves off to the west, uh, we'll start to see some of that moisture uh, get in, uh, actually entwined into this system, which will aid in it developing possibly into a hurricane. Some intensity forecast models are suggesting this could become a uh, rather intense hurricane in the northwestern Caribbean. So we'll see how that plays out right now. Uh, the interaction of land could keep that down from happening, at least the rapid intensification aspect of it. 76 right now. It's cloudy out there with some showers around. Winds are out of the east northeast at 13. The gusts have been as high as 25 today. The high was one degree above average and the low was a few above where it's supposed to be at 74. Two one hundredths of an inch of rainfall. So far it's been a relatively dry month for October, but that is expected to change over the upcoming days. Now the forecast for Thursday does call for Partly cloudy skies, a chance for a few scattered or isolated showers in the morning becoming more numerous in the afternoon and evening as we start to see some of that moisture kind of work its way in our direction. Winds will stay brisk too out of the northeast anywhere from 15 to 20 overnight and then 20 to 25 throughout the day tomorrow with some higher gusts near those showers and storms as they make their way through. Well, this system will make its way through. It looks like right through the eastern portion of Nicaragua and Honduras and Right now, it's kind of void of any significant thunderstorm activity near its center. There's definitely a rotation there and a surface low pressure area. This is tropical depression number 16, soon to be Nate, it looks like, within the next 24 hours as it makes its way off to the northwest. Kind of a narrow cone, really. That's a good sign, at least for the uh, next couple of days. And then it opens up a bit 
as we move into day three and four. Uh, right now, at this present time, it's a long way off from the Sun Coast, but still, we would see some of the tropical moisture headed in our direction, some heavy rainfall, and, and possibly even some feeder bands, even if it follows this path uh, in the upcoming future of the weekend. The toughest days for us would be, it looks like, uh, late Saturday, but into Sunday also, uh, we could see a problem. As I mentioned, most of the models in agreement is going to move off to the north, and then there's some uncertainty after that as the models start to spread a bit and kind of works its way around the periphery of that high-pressure ridge off in the Atlantic. Well, for boaters tomorrow, not the best news. It's been tough boating all week long, and that continues. Uh, choppy conditions on the bays and inland waters and seas running 3 to 5 feet. Sunset will be at 713 and sunrise at 725. The next tide is a low tide at 717. So here's your seven-day. Look for a good chance for showers and storms tomorrow. A little less, but still around on Friday at 50%. And then the weekend will start to up those rain chances again, depending upon the future movement of the tropical cyclone to our south. Back to you. Thank you, Bob. Time now to check your first alert traffic for the drive home. We're seeing a lot of red and orange on the map. Drivers heading northbound on I-75 are seeing some delays around University Parkway and between State Road 70 and State Road 64. Drivers along US 301 northbound near State Road 70 are also seeing a few delays. Volkswagen is recalling nearly 74,000 SUVs in the U.S. because a fuel pump flange can develop cracks and then leak gasoline. The recall covers Torek SUVs. It's part of a larger recall announced in July by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration involving flanges that could affect millions of vehicles. The agency is investigating which vehicles are affected. And they're still recovering from that emission scandal just a few yeah, years ago. Yeah. All right, entertainment news is next. Stay with us. There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice? Choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12-year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. I was always worried and scared. Mom was in pain. She wasn't going to get any better. And all the trips to the ER were painful for all of us. Then we called Tidewell Hospice and everything changed. Now she has care in our home when she needs it, surrounded by family. We know we don't have much time left with mom, but we decided to make the best out of that time. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. Let me introduce you to the ultimate Florida window. <laughs> Do you feel safer with this or this? You'll be proud too. Buy more, save more. Volume discounts on four or more windows. For the last decade, SNS Motorsports of Sarasota has built custom high-performance vehicles for demanding clients worldwide. They're now bringing their 50-plus years of combined build expertise to the parts business. SRQ Performance Parts is your one-stop shop for all your performance parts and accessories. Watch your Suncoast News at 6 on your streaming device for a chance to win a $50 visa. It's easy. Just watch weekdays at 6 for the word of the week. Then enter the word at mysuncoast.com for your shot at a $50 visa. We'll pick the winner each week. Good luck. Attention type 2 diabetics. The FDA warns of an increased risk of amputation associated with certain diabetes medications. If you took the diabetes medications Invokana or Invokamet and then suffered an amputation or one of these other serious injuries, call the Rely On group right now. If you've suffered amputation or any of these other injuries after taking your diabetes medication, call the Rely On group today. You may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-604-1698. That's 800-604-1698. We're still in hurricane season. Storms can pop up at a moment's notice. Sometimes it's just rain. Sometimes it's much worse. When severe weather strikes, trust ABC7 First Alert Weather. We're here for you. There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice? Choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12-year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. Well, country singer Jason Aldean will not be going back on stage this weekend. Yeah, he's still coming to terms with what happened in Las Vegas. He was on stage performing when the shooter opened fire on the crowd. Aldean is now canceling his concerts in Los Angeles, Anaheim, and San Diego this weekend, calling it the right thing to do. 
out of respect for victims of Sunday's shooting. Also in an Instagram post, Aldine described the emotions he's gone through since the shooting, including anger, fear, and heartache. Jason Aldean isn't the only celebrity reacting to Sunday's mass shooting. During an interview for his new film, The Foreigner, actor and martial artist Jackie Chan said his prayers are with the people of Las Vegas. A lot of young kids they said, Jackie, you're a superhero, you're a hero. I really want to be a, any superhero. I can fly around the world, save the people, beat up the bad, bad people, put them in the jail. But Sometimes I watch this, I just useless. Chan says the character he plays in his newest movie relays a good message, relevant to today, telling people to stop this kind of terror. The Foreigner opens in theaters on October 13th. And it's a Titanic reunion. Kate Winslet is joining the Avatar franchise, reuniting the actress with her Titanic director, James Cameron. Winslet will play a character named Ronald, but no word on just how many of the film, films she'll be part of. Cameron says they've been looking to work together again for the past 20 years. Four Avatar sequels are planned to be released in December of 2020, 2021, 2024, and 2025. Polly Perrette will bow out of her role on the crime drama NCIS at the end of its current season. A fan favorite on the show, she plays the upbeat, goth-loving forensic specialist Abby. One of the prime time's most watched drama series, NCIS, is now in its 15th really season. So sad to hear that. I love watching her and watching NCIS as well. She's a great character. I know, very different. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll be right back with more news. Stay with us. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our autumn upgrade event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The More Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the More Space Place.